This episode of Jerry Rig is brought to you by Waldotronics, Mr. Machinist One off of eBay, Greg Hembry of Hembry Guitars and Gig City Customs, and Aaron Shepard, Shep the Chef, cooking it up from Sheptronics. Thank you guys so much for your support and your help with this project. I'm going to play this guitar for the rest of my life. I love you. Thank you. Hey, guys. Real quick, Davey here. Hey, what's up? Just before the video starts, I wanted to, first off, apologize that there's not a lesson this week. And second off, I'm sorry that this video has taken so long for me to get out. And three, you, you're welcome. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Uh, so uh, as this video goes on, so this is the birdie build. This is the whole build. Okay, so there is footage missing. So there will be little gaps. That's why I'm here. I'm going to be narrating it for the most part, periodically popping in and out. You'll see my head in a bubble, right? Okay, so yeah, we're just going to get into it. It's going to be a long one, and it's going to be fun, hopefully. Hopefully you guys will enjoy watching her come together. And then, you know, we're I'll talk about like how things kind of didn't turn out the way I thought, or, you know, it was a, a thing, and I don't know if I'll ever do it again. Maybe it was uh, one of the, it was, a, it was a crazy experience. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Love you. What is up, family? Welcome to a brand new episode of Jerry Rig. If you've never seen the show before, hey, what's up? I'm Davey. I teach a bunch of Grateful Dead songs here on the channel while also doing this show where I, I talk about gear and guitars and things as they, as they pertain to a Jerry sound. Now, this is very fucking exciting because guess what I'm doing? I'm building my own guitar. It's been a long time coming. I, I made a guitar when I was younger. I did one out of a Les Paul kit, and uh, once it was done, it got stolen. My house got robbed, and it got stolen, which really kind of saddened my heart and made it very hard for me to want to, you know, have something that's special again. But I have dealt with my fears, and, uh, you know, we gotta, we gotta work our way through it, right? That's how we live. That's how we get past things in our lives. Uh, so I've decided to, to build my own guitar. Um, it will be a Jerry type guitar, but it's gonna be Davies Jerry type guitar. I love my Fred Wolf, and like this isn't me not taking other guitars as sponsorships and things like that. If you wanna send me a guitar to play on videos and it shows and stuff, I'll still do that. But this is gonna be the guitar that when you look at it, you're like, oh, that's Davies guitar. You know what I mean? It's my own my own design for the most part. So what I've done is I have made the design after so I'm I'm combining the Wolf and I'm combining Betty, which is my white guitar, which is a Dion Savage from anywhere between 1982 and 1984. Um, so you'll see that when I show you this, which is the design. So there's your headstock. Right? And then we're going to work our way up the body there. And that's, that's what our body kind of looks like. I'm going to try to get it in the shadow so you can see. I will, I will be putting up a better picture of the guitar itself. But as you can see, it's got this nice... Hold it up a little bit. It's got this nice kind of... Sorry, I'll come around this. It's got this nice dip down at the bottom there. And you see I've got my, uh, my place, my big cutout for all the electronics and, and that. But you can see how I've kind of changed the design a bit. Um, and I've got it all plotted out. So th this is like the, when you watch all these other different luthiery videos and stuff like that, if you watch like Crimson Guitars or anything like that, Ben from Crimson Guitars tells you to always draw your guitar out full scale. And I think that that's very important, very smart. That's what I did. And I just kind of got a wild hair up my ass and decided I wanted to do this. Um, and also document it for you guys. But now I'm going to show you all the stuff I have for it. So I've got, I got pretty much everything. So you, you, I've got the, I've got the, the full scale drawing. I've got things such as, I've got my fretboard that I got from Alan, Alan Luthiery. So as you can see, I got the, uh, the nice, pretty, artistic grade ebony. It's already been pre-slotted. It's already been pre-radiused because you know that your, oh, focus up. Your, 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 your fretboard is always supposed to be at some kind of radius. Some, some people do flat radius, but it's still not even flat, if that makes any sense. This is a 12-inch radius, which is like the wolf that I have. Uh, but I decided to go with the artistic grade ebony because I like that caramel kind of look in it. I really like that. I think it's gorgeous. Uh, 24 frets. Um, Pre-slotted. So all I have to do is get the frets and mount them in there after I do uh i've already got i've got some uh some pearl inlays on the way from china 
Uh, so there's no telling how long that'll take. But I got my box of goodies here, which is like all my, my accoutrement. So I've got, these are my locking tuners. I picked up some really nice locking tuners. They have the, um, they have abalone there on the locking part of it, as you can see, which is very nice, very pretty. It's kind of my, my thing. I really like the abalone tip on, um, on like my knobs and stuff like that, which I, again, got for this guitar. So tuners, always, and try to get locking tuners. These were only like 40 bucks. So you can even like, if you, if you want these for like the guitar you've got now, you can totally do that. Um, let's see. Next, uh, you've got, uh, this is a battery housing because I'm getting, um, just a regular nine volt battery housing that's going to go on the back of the guitar like the Wolf has. Uh, but this will be for, I'm getting a Waldotronics Spud 2 buffer, which is the buffer that would have been in, it's a unity gain buffer that would have been in Rosebud and the Cripe guitars, like the Deadbolt and Top Hat. Um... These are only a few bucks off of eBay, so you don't really need anything too special for that. And if I have to get a double one, I'll get a double one. Um, and then, you know, you've got, uh, you've got just strap buttons. I don't know if you can see that. Just, just nickel, nickel-plated strap buttons. Um, you've got, so these are my toggle switches. I got a pack of 10 toggle switches for next to nothing off of eBay. These things are great. Just little guys. I'm going to have a bunch of these on the guitar because you've got to have uh, one for Because I'm doing three humbuckers. I'm doing, I ordered three DiMarzio Super 2s, two black and one cream. I think I'm going to do cream, black, black on the guitar. And you'll see that that'll make sense once I show you the wood. Um, so those we're going to have to, I have to split each uh, humbucker. So there's going to be three. And then there's going to be an on-off for the onboard effects loop, so that's four. And then also an on-off for the jar drive, which is five. I'm going to have five toggle switches there. Um, and then for my in my output jacks on the guitar, I went with the new trick. These fellas I went with new trick TRS outputs. So and these are these are basically plastic housing. These things are they, these are what uh, Bartle Ball uses on the back of the Bartle boxes. This is what a lot of people use, uh, even high water guitars. You can see right there that I, I'll put one up. Um, they use these, and they're just they're really solid. They won't fuck up, um, and they've got locking. They'll they'll lock your your cable in there, so no no fucking stuff up that way. Uh, those are gonna be good. Then I've got my knobs, which are these chrome nickel abalone tipped knobs with the uh, the tiny little Allen wrench screw on, just to, just so they'll fit on any of them, any kind of pot that you use. And then I've got my brass nut sitting in here. And this is just Les Paul style nut, but in brass, right? Very nice, very shiny. I'm gonna have to grind it down once once we get to that point though, I'll I'll grind it down and get it to the right height and shape that it needs to be. Five way switch and brass switch plate cover. So this is the five way switch and this is a uh, a kaish and it is it's just a nice it's enclosed. It's an enclosed five way. Right? Got that on the back there, and then just like you got your one, two, three, four, five, five way to, to go between and blend all the pickups that we're going to have. And it came with three different tops, a black, a white, and a cream tip for it. So I'll choose that once I get the guitar pretty much all, all the way done. And then you've got your brass brass pickup cover like or plate cover like Jerry had, right? Just buy those off eBay. Uh, same thing with the brass pickup plate. Now I am... I'm trying to get one of these from Freddy. So you've got the brass pickup plate, see? Uh, and it's it's built for three humbuckers. But uh, this is a little bit skinnier than the way Fred makes them. So I'm also going to have one from Fred. That way I'll just be able to choose which one looks best. And then if I need to, I can put it on another guitar. If I build another one, I'll put it on that one. But it's always good to have some extra, some stuff to play around with. Now this is fun. So this is a this is my um, this is my bridge that I got. So this is a locked, these are rolling, rolling bridge right here. That's going to sit up off the body a little bit. But, uh, so the wolf has a rolling bridge right now, but the rollers aren't enclosed. See the, the rollers are enclosed 
on here so they won't just fall out when you're when you're changing strings and i thought that that was a great idea then also uh what company um what company is it that makes these uh i forget but they mill you can find these on ebay or you can go to their website again i'll i'll link what the name is here i for i forget it starts with a k uh Klusen. this is a Klusen uh alembic style bridge and these just screw right on to the to the to the body so this is like what jerry had on tiger and on rosebud right so these just screw right on to the to the top and these are all in nickel because again i'm going to age these i'm going to age the brass and i'm going to age the nickel which is going to kind of give it this nice worn look and those are all going to kind of gel together um so that's pretty much it for the the shit that's going to go on the guitar but now i bet you want to see the actual the wood you know so my wings this is wormy ambrosia maple right so you can see just all the beautiful coloration on there and the wormholes that i'm very excited about because i want a wizard guitar this is going to be my wizard guitar it's actually supposed to be like that uh because i already kind of have a rough idea of where i'm going to place these on here to get the color that i want out of them so that'll be the if you're looking at the guitar face on that's the left side and then this is going to end up being the right side. A little bit smaller, but this is the smaller side. Uh, and these are my, my wing chunks. This was just one giant piece that I got from uh, Chattanooga Hardwood. And they, uh, you know, they put it through their planer for me. Uh, and then this is the neck. So I'm doing neck through. I'm doing a neck through construction because I really like the way it looks. And it's just, it's a stronger construction. And it's great. So this is the neck blank so and i made this and i will show you exactly how i made it uh later in the video but this is it done well it's not done uh, i'm actually about to go over to the shop and cut it out uh but this is this is the neck blank so what you have is you have some flame maple and then in between that i don't know if you can see uh but you've got zebra wood and then purple heart so your your middle chunk is purple heart and then you've got zebra wood sandwiching that and then maple. And that's what this guy looks like. I've already got the, ne the neck kind of plotted out on here. I'm going to be putting a really nice, big, fat uh, volute. A volute is something that just strengthens the joint where the, ne the headstock and the body come together. It just strengthens that because a lot of the times if you, if you drop a neck-heavy guitar, the headstock's just going to bust right the fuck off. So a volute helps that not happen. It doesn't keep it from happening, but it helps it not happen. So I'm putting a big cripe style volute on the back here. Um, and I'm extremely excited. I, uh, I'm, I'm also very nervous, uh, but I, I have a knack for woodworking. I've always, like, I really I've always really loved working with wood. I've made some pedal boards. I've refinished a lot of furniture. Um, and so this was just kind of like the next progression. And I also just wanted to have my own thing that I put my blood, sweat, and tears into um, for you guys. I wanted to show you guys this whole process, hopefully get you guys stoked about it. All right, narrator Davey here. What's up? Okay, so this is the design of Birdie. So the model I decided on, uh, I decided to name it the Griffin model. And her name is Birdie. Get it? And so, like, I really just wanted to have that shape of the die on and really wanted to do something cool with the headstock. Okay, everybody. What I got here? I got my design down on my wormy maple. See that over there? And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to get an idea of what I want to do with the wood grain. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So I'm going to take some pieces of white paper and I'm going to lay them over my design here. And then I'm gonna fucking table them up. And then I'm gonna trace it out and I'm gonna cut it out. And uh, then we're gonna figure out how we want this to look.
All right, as you can see there, we've got it drawn out. Now we're gonna cut it out. And then we're gonna see what it's gonna look like on our wood. Which is pretty fucking exciting. All right, guys, narrator Debbie, and as you can see, this is just super, super simple idea of just tracing out the, the body of it and putting it down there to gauge where I wanted the grain to be, right? Because I wanted you to get a lot of this bit of grain in it, you know? And that took some mapping out. And so, like, I just thought that was a neat thing to, to show you guys that I did, even though I didn't finish it. What was wrong with me? All right, guys, I am in the shop. And I have my neck wood here. So I've got maple, flame maple, got zebra wood, got purple heart. And this is going to be my neck construction. And uh, I'm about to glue this bitch together. So uh, let's do that. All right, so I'm gluing the bitch together, right? Isn't this interesting to see? And you gotta, you gotta be sure to get enough glue on there. If it's not oozing out the side, I don't think you put enough on. Aaron popping in to say, what's up? That's Shep the Chef. Helping me, there's my butt. What's happening? <laughs> my no ass, hanging out. There you go. I don't care. It's the human body. I know I'm weird looking. And see, like, I, I remember having trouble just getting everything to sit straight. Because, again, I did a lot of this myself. They just kind of let me be back there in the shop. Um, and, and so this there, there was a lot of, like, just trying to figure it out myself. And that also led to a fuck-up at one point with the neck. Led to a fuck-up on the headstock, like, angle that I tried to cut there by myself without using the, the saw. Um, and you'll see... Here, here in a moment, once I get this done, you'll see well, Greg fix it. Here we are. She's not perfect, but she'll get there. We've got her nice and tight and viced. And in a day or so, we'll have a neck blank. It's going to be gorgeous. All right, family, it is... A full 24 hours, we have let it set up and dry, and now we're gonna unclamp this bitch. Hi, Aaron. Hello. <laughs> All right, so this is pretty straightforward. This is just the unclamping process of the of the neck. Um, you can see there that like the uh, the the zebra wood just doesn't make it all the way down, and that didn't really that didn't really fuck anything up. Every everything at this stage has gone to plan. Like it was, it actually went, went better than I thought it would. Um, and then next you'll see that like, just, just showing that it, it looks pretty good. It's pretty flat on that one side, but then I still have to go through and, and you know, really, really work it with the, the sander. And then I started taking it through like a small planer, like a very small, like a uh, sandpaper planer. And then, so that was able to like really give it, give it the, the, the smoothness and consistency that I wanted. But this was just to get that initial kind of unevenness dealt with. And it's honestly before I fucking realized that I, they had one and I could use it. You know what I mean? So I was, I was totally ready to like do this all by hand and with, you know, all the fucking, all the chisels and shit. But they're power tools now, kids. And so, yeah, just sanding the hell out of it. I'm sorry, my laptop is down here. It's, I guess some, there's, I don't even want to talk about it. Uh, so you've got, and you can see the chatter down there from the, from it being burnt a little bit by the, by the planer. Um, or maybe that was something I did. I don't remember, guys. This was, this was actually, this was a long time ago. So now it was a long time ago, months ago now. This is probably like four months ago. The, the whole process took me about two and a half months to complete. And so yeah, this is this is Greg fixing my fuck up. Do you see the burn there? Yeah, that's that's all me. I fucked that right up. I tried to do it first with one of those Japanese hand saws, and then um, 
And then I tried to do it with a circular saw, and I just fucked up. I fucked up. I tried to use a chop saw to do it. Not the tool. Not the tool to use. That's the tool to use. Um, and then after that, he didn't... <laughs> I, I mapped out the volume and stuff, and he didn't quite trust me to, to cut this part out. But from here on out, I pretty much, I pretty much cut everything. Um, so, yeah. He just really didn't want me to fuck up because this is something I couldn't fuck up um, or it would mean restarting and so I, I was really appreciative of all the work and like letting me use the shop he didn't have to do that um, I mean I pitched in where I could I, I, tried to, I tried to be a good house guest I know I wasn't perfect because again I don't know anything about Luthiery I don't really know anything about running a shop um so this was all like a learning process. And so this is the neck break angle that he's doing right now. So, so what this is, is this is like the actual angle of the neck. So hold on. As you can see there, you can see the neck angle. You can see that the neck goes at an angle from the body. And so sometimes when you're doing a neck through, it's easier to do that by taking it out of the body part. Um, and now here we are routing out. And Greg went through and, and cleaned it up. Because again, this is one of those things where it's like if you fuck up the truss rod routing, it's it, you have to restart. Or you know you can fill it and then try again, but then you're compromising the wood. Um, so that that was just the cleanup pass. Okay, and now now that we've got the neck break angle. Now what we're doing is I I'm now on the saw. Okay, so I I'm now cutting out the the headstock of Birdie, which. Is my like my favorite thing. I love this headstock design that I came up with. Um, it's nice and skinny, so your strings can be pretty straight. It's really important for your strings to not have like a crazy break angle in them. Um, so that was that was one thing I was really proud of about the design in itself. That and this fucking fat volume, my dude. You know what I'm saying? But like I had to do a lot of the little chatter marks because again, like I was new to this. And it's not like I haven't used power tools before. Like, I worked construction for a long time. I'm not, like, I'm not precious about it. But, like, you have to be precious about this kind of wood because this is, like, this is the difference between it working and not working. And, uh, and now we are on to shaping the volute. Okay? So, like, with shaping the volute, it's, it was such a challenge because you're taking something that's, like, a rough like rough hard edges and you're you're making it really smooth you're making it supple it's like again it's like it's sculpting basically like at this point i'm like sculpting wood with sandpaper and a grinder so that was that was that was greg's greg's idea to use that on it and it, it gave me some more chatter the one thing that was really fucking me up was that do you see that little angle coming off the end of the volute into the the head there that was one of the things that it took me forever to get rid of. And you'll see it forming and going away here. Um, and then what? I th yeah, I take, I take these. Uh, so that's like a... a oh, fuck. It's just a circular file. Um, and then that was like letting me get some of the, the detail work done. Just to kind of like... Because I wanted it to be kind of like this nice kind of almost leaf shape. Like a teardrop shape almost. Um, but then I think I take the rasp to it, the, Shin, the Shinto rasp, and I, I just, like, I mar it up pretty good. I'm going at it with, like, some 80 right there. Um, and again, like, you're taking something square and you're making, making it soft. It's, it's strange. Um, it was something, that, like, this is, this is something that I really didn't know everything that went into it. And it was, it was such a process. Uh, again, super thankful to have done it. It's like everything. I take the I take the hard way because like I could have saved up thousands and thousands of dollars and paid someone to make this kind of instrument for me. Um, but you know, meeting the right people and being cool with the right people and having like seven hundred dollars for the materials and then you've got it. Um, so that's that's around about seven 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 hundred to like eight fifty around in there is what I paid for this this guitar, um, all the materials that doesn't count like what hours I put into it. I wouldn't even put a price on that because this is so long. Like even just this this time lapse that we're doing for the volume, this was this was a couple hours. 
of me just doing this, doing the same fucking thing. And then, oh, yeah, there's the rasp. And then I just, oh, do you see that? Do you see where I fucked up? Do you see all that? Ugh. Oh, man. Those those wrapped sanding blocks. That sandpaper with the adhesive on the back was such a lifesaver because you can put it on anything. So I put it on a block, and then you've seen that circular one that I use. Um, that one right there. It worked so well. And then again, it's just so, so much sanding went into this guitar. But it's, it's finally starting to come together. Of course, there was more. There was more sanding done on it. I had to take down uh, a lot on the headstock. Like, the headstock became a lot more skinny than you see it on there. And then there's, yeah. So there's the new volume. There's what it looks like kind of done, you know, profile and what have you. Now we are on to the neck carving. And this was... This in itself was probably one of the most intimate parts of the build because, again, like, you're, this is like, I, I'm literally putting in blood and sweat in this moment. Like, I'm, I'm really, like, working hard to, to figure it out. And then Greg comes up and is like, no, you're doing it. Here, let me show you. <laughs> and he showed me that it's really kind of like rowing a boat. You see him get down there like that and just, like, working it. And so, like, you've got that flat rasp. And it's got a rounded edge to one side, too. And then you've got the Shinto rasp, which is that bigger one with the red handle. Uh, and that's more for smoothing out the rough edges that you do with this. Because this, the, the, the file that I'm using eats meat. It eats away at it. Um, so that's why, I mean, you can see just through this time lapse. And he's showing me with the, the small cylindrical file how to get the detail work done and stuff like that. Um, and then you see me fucking do it. Greg just taught me how to really handle a piece of wood with my hands. You know what I'm saying? Really make something nice out of it. Just work that hard wood with your hands, boy. Get in there. Get it. And again, it was like a, a lot of it was like rowing a boat. I really, I really did my best to kind of equate it to that. And like, there I am, like kind of getting the, where, where the neck will eventually meet the wings of the body. Um, and then you gotta take that sandpaper to it. And it was just this really crazy process of, of like tapering. Because again, like this is all by feel. There's really like, unless you're doing it with a machine, there's really no rule book to how to do this. Uh, well, I mean, there are, there are ways you, ha you do it. But again, obviously I didn't do what most people do where they'll like cut the degrees out and get it perfect. No, nah, I went with my hand. I want it to be the shape of my hand, you know? And so, like, you see that I'm, like, literally using the shape of my hand to, to sand it out. Man. Just, like, watching back on this stuff, it really, like, takes you back to the day. It was so fucking hot in there. It was the middle of summer. All right, here you see we have the wings. And we about to glue them motherfuckers on. I had to cut the the tips, the horns out, uh, just just for ease. Because once once it was glued on, you didn't want to. I didn't want to have to cut it out against the neck. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so Greg is showing me how to how to glue this up. You can see that that neck break angle is gonna make this a little difficult at the end. It changed it out. So that was uh, this is the next day after it's been glued. Because again, you see like. Uh, Quite a bit of this footage is like gone. I, my my phone uh, would stop recording and it would. Uh, it was, uh, this has not turned out the way I wanted it to, but that's life, isn't it? And there I am cutting out the bottom the bottom part here. I love this part of this guitar. I this is one of the best things about it, I think, to me. Those curves, man. You got to really work the chatter on them. And uh, now we will show you some, some nice little progress shots here after getting her cut. Isn't that cool to just kind of see it start to come together? And now on the bottom, though, you have some incongruencies. So the, the top is nice and flat. It's almost perfect. It's flush. Um, take her outside, show her off a little bit. So it doesn't look bad, right? 
And now what I'm doing is I'm taking down that difference of the back, right? Because we had to put it at an angle, because remember the neck break angle. So you had to put these at an angle. So now I am taking those down, and here I am doing the contours. So this is the, the contour here for your arm. This is the forearm contour. You see my line there through the middle of it. I did a middle line all the way around so I knew where I wanted my contours to end. I saw you looking at my butt. Stop looking at my butt. And then I'm going to flip her over. God, that, that thing always got away from me. <laughs> thing was so hard to use. All right, now I'm doing the belly, doing the old, the old belly cut, putting it up against my belly, make sure it worked, make sure it fit, because I really did build this guitar to my body. This guitar is big. I'm a big boy, and you see that I made the neck end at the body. That's not usually how that goes. Feeling okay about my work. Then here I am. Uh, I've got a little bit of the contouring done, but here I'm hogging out the, the pickup cavity. Um, stressful. Uh, this was all stressful. After this point, this was all the most stressful stuff I've ever done in my life. Because, again, it, it all rides on it. Because now I've gotten to the point now, again, if you fuck up, it's, there, there's, and I, I did continue to fuck up. Don't, don't get me wrong. Um, but this is one of those points where it's like, even one little thing and you've probably you've either got to patch it and wait or you've got to start over and so i was being really careful about my the how far i was going down because you don't want to you don't want to bust through it sorry i got the coffee burps i'm marking it out make sure it all fits all right, guys, right now I am hogging out the, the electronics access in the back here of the Griffin. I'm about to do, about to do the battery hole, and then I will drill my accesses to my areas, you know, shoot through there to the other side. But right now I'm just using this chisel to get all my rough parts off so I can just kind of see what I'm working with it. Okay, this was also, again, you're going to hear me say that this was stressful, but it was. It was scary, uh, especially just like, I know that this is time lapse, but this really took me a long time to even get the balls to, to cut the, the fretboard because I only got one. I'm not going to get more. It was a waste of money, but if I fucked up, I fucked up. Um, so here I am cutting it out, getting kind of the right, the, the right profile for the neck. Got a little design at the bottom here and you'll you'll see like what extent I took that job. I mean you can see it when I when I play it, but nice little close up. And then nice satisfying. And now I'm putting in the old side dots. Um, and this is uh, this is before I like cut it down the final time. So I had to redo I had to do this again. This isn't on film, but I had to do this whole process again. I had to do it twice. It wasn't that bad. You just drill a hole, stick the plastic in, cut it. That's also the same plastic that I used to film the wormhole, or fill the wormholes. I forgot. No, I didn't forget to film it. It just, that film is gone. I don't know. Ask me where it is. I don't know. Uh, and here I am now. I am uh, putting in uh, the old frets. You see, I'm beating beating the, the devil out of them, ripping the dick off, as I do. I go real hard in the paint. Um, and at some point, you'll see me, like, put the rest of them out there to make sure I have all of them. Because, you know, they're, they're tiny. You never know if you're going to fucking have them all. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah, I was like, do I have them? Okay, I've got them. And 
And and honestly, I was impressed with myself because after checking them out, I got them in, and they they're pretty pretty level. And now we're at the point, as you can see, I've already I've already fitted. I've got the other the other holes drilled. I've got my access drilled again. This this footage was filmed, but it is it is lost to the ages. And now what I'm doing is I'm putting these little pegs in to mark the back of the fretboard so it'll stay. So it's a way to like lock it in place. So I put little nails in the neck and then I poach little holes in the back of the fretboard. And now I'm drilling tiny little holes in the back of the fretboard so it sits on those little nail bits and won't move once it's glued. Right, pretty smart. Uh, I did kind of fuck it up though. Of course, of course I did. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. So of course I fucked it up. Now Greg's showing me, no, you didn't fuck up that bad, but you fucked up. Um, and now we're on the gluing part, again. Gotta, gotta put enough glue on, because you don't want it to go anywhere. Um, show up, take the tape off, put it down there, yeah. Then start to clamping. Uh, this was this was interesting, because uh, I had to really figure out the best way to, do it. again, there's really no, uh, people have stuff, they have jigs for this kind of stuff, where it'll like, let's see what I'm doing, I'm using a radius, uh, like a radius sanding block to hold down on the, the fretboard with the same radius as my fretboard, right? It's a 12 inch radius, 12 inch block. So it should hold it down properly. But then bottom of the neck, what are you gonna do? That's also round. So you don't wanna put stuff on it. Like I had to put a layer of something flat down here cause you don't want it to like mar your neck. You don't wanna do more work on that. I ended up having to anyways, because you have to like make it match with the fretboard, right? Once it's sealed. Uh, so wiping glue off, getting it all done, you know, stuck in there. We got my scrap piece of wood on top of it, holding it down that I would test colors on. You can see that I wanted it to be kind of like a teal color. It is not a teal color. She's not a teal. Um, and yeah, so I mean, like some of you may like the way she looks naturally. And let me know. So this is the next day again like so you really only need to let this wood glue dry for about a day before you can work on it uh, sometimes over even four hours depending on how you feel about it i like to let stuff go a day if i can if i can stand to let it wait that long um, and she's good she's glued down all right guys so here's birdie and uh we're gonna be doing the the final sand and the tape up so we can Start fucking finishing. You know what I'm saying? So let's uh let's do it. We're gonna run it down with some some 220. Just do a final little gloss over. Make sure everything's nice and smooth. And then we're gonna tape up the fretboard. Start spraying. Right, like I said, this is the final sand, and like this in itself was pretty bittersweet. Cause like you've been working on something for so long, and it's just like you kind of get to that point where you're like, oh shit, now it's like, it's almost done. Like this is a guitar now. Like I've got all the shit, I've got it, I've got it fully sanded down, and now it's like, now again, it's like the stressful part, cause like this is the this is the finishing process, you know. So like now I've got, I've got this guitar. All right, guys. Take it in. This is Birdie before stain. Well, before lacquering, we're not going to stain her. We're going to put the color. We're going to be putting the color, which is going to be very close to this color, but a bit darker. We're going to do a few layers of it. But this is going to be the color that we're going to be putting in the stain or in the lacquer to go onto it. And I think it's going to be great. Let's, uh, let's tape her up. Right. Taping up the fretboard with the old frog tape. Frog tape, the, the green tape is probably like one of the best ways to go if you're doing any kind of like paint or, or finishing work on anything you need to cover something up. It's just, it's just so good. Uh, who am I talking about fucking tape? Who, fucking, who wants to hear about the tape? Um, getting that old thing done. God, I fucked up so much on this guitar, but I love it. I love it so much, but there are so many things that I could have and should have done. Um, 
But it, it is again, it's a learning process. Like there, there's so many places where like you know a, a router skipped. Um, like I had to fill in a spot. Okay. Last time you will see Birdie naked is before the the first the first time doing the first coat. God, I love the profile of the headstock down. She's weird, but I I love her. See how pale the wood was? Oh, so so pale. So fresh. So innocent. But as soon as that that clear coat started going on, it was like whole other world, baby. I know that people that actually know how to do this stuff are like screaming at me right now. What the fuck? You're just going to get run. You're going to get bubbles. You're going to do all that. And I did. I did, bitch. Calm down. It's old. The guitar's already here and done and been you've been beaten. It's okay. Get out of the way. But again, you can see that it's like different. Like, holy shit, right? It's great. It's gorgeous. That makes me think I should have just left it that way. But no. No. We make our choices. We live with them. Oh, God. So rich. All right, guys. Now it's time to do some wet sanding. Wet sanding was, yeah, put your hand in it. <laughs> God, I'm so dumb. The The wet sanding just kind of like takes away the, the abrasive parts and kind of gets any kind of like hairs or whatever would have gotten in there, which shouldn't have gotten in there. It just gets all the shit out. Okay, guys, so I've got quite a few coats of the clear on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape it up. I'm going to tape up this metal part here. And so I can start to put the color on my wings. She's starting to get shiny. I've gotten some layers on and now what I'm doing is I'm taping up the middle. And this was the first time that I sprayed color on it. I don't have any footage of that. Uh, the first time I sprayed color on it, I went all over the whole thing. And I wasn't a fan of it. I didn't like it too much. Uh, it was just too much of this, the one color. So you really got to tape this shit up. Don't want any of that color going on anything else. And so since I didn't like that first time I did the color, I went back and I decided to put some of this, this orange tape on it with the green tape to kind of get these contours and leave the contours naked. And so this is, a, this is just a couple layers of the color, and it's like almost a denim look, and it was too blue, and I wasn't a fan, but then I did... I did a little bit too much and she turned into into this dark green, um, which is great. But look at this reveal, bitch. Look at this. Look at it. Look at this triple away. D damn it. Do it. Oh, that's so satisfying. Oh, that's so good. Yes. One of the highlights, highlights of my life is like pulling that away and being like, ah, oh, did something. Cause it's like, it's like pretty perfect guys. It's a pretty perfect, like it's pretty good. And then what I had to do after this was I had to go back through and put even more layers of clear coat to build that middle back up to meet the, the lacquer with the color, right? Which darken the color more example. Um, and as you can see, it's a lot more, as you can see, is it's a lot more crisp than, um, than the way it is now, right? And that's because afterwards, I decided to like take away some of it. I wanted it to look more weathered. Again, like a wizard guitar. 
Boom, bitch, just let it hang. This is a nice little back view. She looked good. She looked good as a young lady. All right, now we are on to the wiring. Shout out to Aaron Shepard for teaching me how to solder in like 10 minutes. Um, he taught me how to solder like he does. Of course I fucked up, but hey, it is what it is. It's the whole process. Um, so I don't know if you can see it, but the little thing with the yellow wire coming out of it that is adhered to the side of the guitar, that is the Waldo Unity buffer. That's the that's the, the Rosebud buffer. Um, and I'm, what I'm doing right now is I'm hooking all of the, the pickups up to their pots and to the, the switches, the, the split switches. And then I'll, I'll wire in the... Oh God, this took me so long, and I still didn't even do it right. So this is, this is literally three hours. This is over three hours of me wiring. It's just really sped up. And so what I've got in here is I've got my master volume, and that runs down to the the input or output jacks. Uh, and then everything else is run to that master pot. So this master pot is the house of everything. Um, this pot, this black one, this big pot right here, that one, it's the master. And it rains with an iron fist. Um, and so there, there's also a spot for a jar drive in here. I have the jar drive and I was gonna put it in, but that day, so this was the first day I even got to play Birdie too. So she's pretty well fully assembled under that. And again, I had footage of the assembly and it's gone. Yeah, kids, label everything. <laughs> Don't let anyone sign your checks. Yeah, this was just, it, it was, of course it could have been cleaner and I could have done a better job. But as you can see, you uh, as you can see, I gotta stop saying that. You see that silver stuff that's in there? That is a nice conductive paint. Uh, it's really high quality. I think it's nickel. I don't, don't quote me on that. I'd have to figure it out. But it's it was it's been really good. Like my guitar's quiet. She's real quiet. And then here are some some nice uh, some nice glamour shots. There she is, as she looked the day she came home. So this is the day I brought Birdie home. She's precious. Run on, back on. A bit of a low angle shot. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Nice. Nice and crisp. So so after we go through these, I'll show you what the fuck she looked like now. Um, and she is... She's something. Oh, boy. So pretty. Such a pretty girl. God damn that headstock. You know what I'm saying? I love that volume. Look at that. Just reach out and touch it like it's squishy. Yeah. Big fan. Big fan of my work. <laughs> okay, guys. So that's that's basically the birdie build. That's what I have left. That's all I've got to give right now, other than like what I can show you as as far as what's happened since. Okay, so since then, over the past few months, since I've had Birdie, her nut has changed. I've I've given her a new nut. Um, the 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 original brass nut that I had for her was cheap, and it wasn't actual musical brass. It was brass plated, and so it was it was dog doo doo. Um, since I did not have the balls to put the mother of pearl inlays that I bought into the guitar, I did not have the balls to route these out. These are stickers because you, the subscribers, did not like to. To, to guess at what frets my fingers were on, which is totally cool. Um, another thing you can see is that the lacquer has yellowed a bit, which is, it's going to do over time. I picked a cellulose-based one, and it also means that it checked. So, and it, I don't know if you can necessarily, you can see all that checking. You can see all that. And so some people really like that. You know, and it goes all the way up the neck. Look at that volume. 
Okay. There's even been checking on the front. But, you know, I changed, uh, I put a black knob on here for the master. Um, and, uh, of course, you know, I've got the Roland GK3 on there now. Again, this is a guitar. I play the fuck out of this thing, you know? It's like the, the again, I'm not going to be precious with it. Eventually, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to strip it. I'm probably going to strip the finish off of it. I kind of want to see what it would look like white. Like a white wash, like a see-through white on it. Like still keep the curves and the, you know, still keep this idea of where parts of it are naked. But I don't know, the Dion's white, and maybe I want to see what birdie looks like white. White bird. One thing is I, I broke my, my back plate. We were doing a St. Owsley show in Asheville, North Carolina at the, uh, the one stop. And part of it, it wasn't screwed down all the way, and part of it got hooked on my belt, and I ripped part of it off and the 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 thing about a boutique guitar is that uh you have to make another back plate if you want another one and i don't have the time at the moment so she is gorilla taped on there so the the what's left of the back plate is still there it's still got the shielding uh so it's not it's still not noisy um but i love this guitar man and if you want to watch me play this guitar you can literally just watch any other video on this channel Okay, so thank you guys so much for going on this journey with me. It has meant the world to me to be able to to make a guitar. I didn't think I was going to be able to do it and to like model a guitar after like, you know, my musical idol is 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 everything to me. Like I love to be able to have a Jerry guitar, but it not be a copy, it not be a, you know, uh, not that I, I will always play my wolf. I will always play like a fucking Travis Bean. I'll fucking eventually get like a, a Tiger Rosebud style body guitar. Eventually, I'm going to have all these things. But it, it really meant something to me because I feel like I do my own thing with the music. It was important for me to do my own thing with the guitar. It was important for me to be able to express myself through this because I'm not trying to just do it the way that Jerry did it. Because if you know me, you know that my ethos is like, do you, no matter what the cost. It's just... This music has always been one of the most important things to me. It saved my life literally a few times, and I owe it. I owe it a debt of gratitude, uh, and I owe it to do myself to it. I'm not just gonna not just gonna copy, not just gonna do it the way someone else does it. I'm not gonna do it the way Jerry did it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do it the way Davey does it, which is why you have Birdie. And another thing is that the body. Do you see how the body's a little cockeyed? You see how it's not particularly straight? That's because when we were doing the wings, there was a fuck up. And so, like, the body in itself just kind of, like, just very so slightly, it tweaked. So, like, I don't know. It almost works with, like, the contour of a body for it to be, like, curved with the body, but the neck comes straight. It's strange. Um, but, again, watch any other video. Thank you to the sponsors. Thank you to Waldo for the buffer. Thank you to Mr. Machinist for the brass. Thank you to Greg Hembry of Gig City Customs. Thank you to Aaron Shepard of Sheptronics. Uh, thank all of you. Because again, without your support and without you guys watching this, I wouldn't have her. It's, it's because of you. So thank you so much. And uh, catch us on the next one. Jerry Rig out.